Mr. Dida, I trust you will give him the same respect. Give him a time to answer, and please do not shout him down with another question or with a statement. We now invite anybody to come up to the microphone in the passage here and to put any question that he or she may want to ask. It is over to you. Um, good, uh, good evening, all of you. Now, Mr. Amadidat, I have always heard about you, and my desire was always to talk with you, not in the state to argue or anything else. And I don't want to make excuses, because why that's not a thing. I have heard you were talking about Dumanis. Now, I also want to say something about this, then I'm going over to my questions. There's one different thing. God has also his spirit. Now when I wanted to go to a Bible school, the Lord stopped me from going to CBI in Surrey State, Club Fontaine Road. Now, Mr. Amadidat, I just want to get a clearance on this. Not to say that I am going against you, as I've already said, I'm not making excuses. Now, you have said that Jesus is not Muhammad, but uh, Jesus is not, uh, Moses is not talking about Jesus, but about Muhammad. Now, I believe that Mr. Didat had, has also gone to Bible schools, etc., etc., as you have said with your own mouth of selling the sugar, etc., etc., to the other missionaries and how they teased you. I like that so because why it made me laugh, not for a joke, because of the earnestness for your faith. Now, in Moses 18, 18, as you have said, it's true, which you have said about that. I agree. But then there's points to go on. I have first taken Matthew, um, Matthew 14, 16, John 14, 16, where Jesus has also said and has talked about someone to come. And I also believe that you say that this is the same, it's Muhammad, right? Now I'm going, I want you just to be patient. I, I'm going on scriptural just to go it and to say why I believe that Muhammad was not Jesus, not to go against, go against the Islamic faith, because that's Christianity not to go against anyone's faith. And that's what I want to say. It says in Moses 18, 18, that as you say, that Jesus, that God will rise up someone likewise to the one called Moses. That's a fact, as you have said. But then it's revealed to that it was so. It says, you understand Afrikaans, Mr. Ahmad, did that? No, I don't. I'll read it and I'll translate it to you. In Luke 7, that lees in Afrikaans, as jylle miskien hoor dat ek miskien verkeerd trans, leid of so, dan is jylle recht om vir my recht te stel en so voort. Dit lees so, yeah. nadat Jesus a wonderwerk gedoen het. Uh, just one thing, brother, before you go on, we would like you to put your question, you know, we would like to be patient with you and not to feel mm. that you are cut down. Mm. If you could put the question, then I can get you an answer, right? Okay. In vrees het allemaal aangegrip, dit was achter Jesus' een wonderwerk gedoen het. Die Jesus wat ek van praat nou. Terwijl hulle God verheerlik en sê, een groot profeet het onder ons opgestaan en God het sy volk besoek. Dit was nou die Israelite sy volk wat God daarvan praat. Nou daarom trend, is het dus zo so, dat 
Not Jesus said also that he is the great prophet, but the people that was even Jewish people, but it was from another city called Nain. They said that a great prophet has risen amongst us. Uh, brother, uh, could I ask you to put your question because you have quoted Luke 7, yeah. where you said that the people have said that uh, mm. God has raised up, that Jesus is a great prophet, mm. and that he's probably the prophet referred to in 1818. Mm. Uh, could you put your question, then we'll get an answer. Okay. If you would like time to put your question properly, then maybe somebody else can come up and ask a question in the meantime. Okay. Okay. Anybody else, please? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my dear uh, Ahmad Didat, I was very impressed with your, with your speech tonight. But as a Muslim, there is something that is not clear in my mind. And I think a lot of other people uh, would, would also like to get some clearance on this matter. Um, of course, you, you did quote that uh, um, it is said that uh, Prophet Muhammad would be the, would be the one. I mean, uh, you, you said that, uh, I mean, it is quoted that uh, he will be raised from amongst their brethren. Now, <clears throat> of course, this means that he will be a great person. But why did God give him that greatness, uh, which was so short-lived? Why did he achieve that greatness only for 23 years of his life? Why wasn't he a great man from the time he was born? Why wasn't he, um, why wasn't he so great? Uh, I wouldn't say great, but why wasn't he so popular uh, like Jesus was? Why, why did he achieve um, world popularity only years after his birth? Uh, could you explain that to us? I'm sure you will do a, a lot of justice to a lot of other Muslims and non-Muslims in this place. Why did God wait for 40 years before revealing the Quran to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Suppose the Quran was revealed to him at the age of 30. See, like Jesus Christ, he was baptized at the age of 30 in the river Jordan by John the Baptist. So he said, look, why 30? Why not at 25? And if it was 25, why not at 20? Why wasn't he born with a book in his hand? <laughs> These are questions that you have to address to Allah. You see? As I said, the Quran is a book of telegrams. You remember? The Quran is a book of telegrams from Allah through his messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now you have to send a telegram to him, God Almighty. Ask him, why did you wait till the age of 40 before you delivered this message to him? It's not me, it's not in my hands. He chose Moses at the age of 40. He chose the other prophets, David at the age of 40. He chose Jesus at the age of 30. Right. That's his business. When the time is ripe, the message is given. With regards to greatness, you see, if you read, I don't know whether you're in touch with what is going on in the world today. A certain Michael Ash Hart has written a book called The Top 100. The most influential men in history. And you see the number one, Muhammad Sallallahu In the Times Magazine, the greatest leader of all times, Jules Masserman, a Jew, a United States psychologist, is the greatest leader of all time, was Muhammad. La Martin, in his history of the Turks, is the greatest man that ever lived, was Muhammad. I'll be dealing with this aspect of greatness in the third lecture, I think, Muhammad the Greatest. So I hope you will hold your horses till then. Why did God choose this man, you know, at the age of 40? And why is he recognized today? In the lifetime, every prophet, you know, you made a statement, I think that maybe you didn't know, you slipped out of your mouth, that Jesus was a great success. You know, Muhammad had to make migration. His companions had to make two migrations to Abyssinia. Jesus was a great success. That is not true. You know it's not true. You know what was his 
end, according to the Christian, what they say? The man was killed on the cross. Is that greatness? Is that success? And all his disciples forsook him and fled. They left him in the lurch. All. 100% failure. And today, the Christian world are not following Jesus at all. According to that Michael at heart, he says that, you see, the honor for Christianity should be divided between Jesus and Paul. And actually, Paul is the real founder of Christianity, not Jesus Christ. 